It is almost unbelievable that in this 21st century, there are still parts of the world where women struggle for the right to earn. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you secrets of smart money women and how to stay on top of your game as a woman financially. So if it's something that you'd be interested in, you definitely want to stick around to the end of this video. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. If it's your very first time seeing this beautiful face, please and please do not make it your last. Hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified each time I post a new video. My name is Raya and it's good to have you here. I'm going to be talking about money today. You know money makes the world go round. Who doesn't love money? I love money. You love money. We all love money and we want to be on top of our game. We want to make sure that we're not stranded. I'm going to be sharing with you guys a few secrets of women that are smart women who have learned from the mistake of other people who have studied their environment and will not dare to make mistakes when it comes to finance now the first mistake that a smart money woman will not make is to make a man her financial plan now making a man your financial plan is the most dangerous thing ever and sometimes till now i can't actually believe that there are still women who are naive enough to think that oh once i get married all my financial problems are solved no my dear once you get married all your financial troubles begin when you start childbearing your financial troubles are most begin because you have to plan towards taking care of those children there's so many factors that come into consideration so your problems do not end when you're getting married when you get married to a you cannot rely on your man to provide for you it's a very dangerous game to play this person could drop dead at any minute this person could lose their job this person could decide that you know what i don't want to be doing this anymore at a certain point and you wouldn't be able to do anything about it so what would you be left to do you'll be stranded you'd be stranded with no source of income with no way to take care of yourself because god you've decided to make them your source which is a very wrong thing a lot of families are thrown into turmoil and poverty because they left the man or the man decided that he wants to be the sole provider and he doesn't want his wife to be financially independent and somehow they, when these people are sole providers they do not make adequate arrangements or provisions for their children to be taken care of if something happens to them and then we have crazy people who feel that oh death will never come to them uh, they are going to live forever and all that they just make rash and crazy decisions that will put their family at financial risk in the long run so it is very important for you to have or to be financially stable as a woman not just for yourself but for your unborn children and your family members around you don't you want to be comfortable don't you want to be able to provide for yourself don't you want to have peace of mind there's a certain kind of money you have that you just feel this peace and satisfaction from deep within you because you don't have to beg from anyone you don't have to uh, please anyone you don't have to bend over to anyone just because you want to get money from them you make money in your own terms and then being financially dependent on somebody is what exposes a lot of women to abuse in relationships and they do not have the option of leaving because they are so trapped and caged by the fact that they cannot provide for them. Another tip I would like to throw in is that smart money women do not have children they cannot take care of. Now, it's dangerous for you to give birth to children you can't take care of. If you're financially stable and you feel like you're wealthy enough, you're comfortable to a point where you can take care of your children by yourself, then you can decide to have a certain amount of children as long as you can take care of them because men sometimes do not know the sacrifice and the cost of taking care of children so it is important for you to understand look at your environment understand learn from the women around you and do not make the mistake of giving birth to 20 children just because one man says he wants 20 children if he wants 20 children let him establish you let him make you rich let him be wealthy you cannot be wanting plenty children when your pockets are dry your pockets are empty do not fall for that scam that says god will survive because my dear you are just going to be trapped in a situation that you will not be able to bring yourself out of 
and people will not be able to help you because you have decided to have plenty of children for one man because it says and then it sickens me when i see people who are not financially stable who complain about the fact that their husbands do not provide for them and their children and still go ahead to take in for these people what exactly are you expecting to happen when that extra one drops the same thing the same cycle of complaint will continue the next thing the smart money woman does not do is to hop on trends hmm. hopping on trends because you want to prove a point you want to have the latest you want to feel among and i don't know this hopping on trends thing is like the easiest way for you to go broke by trying to look expensive to impress people who do not even care or give a hoot about you it's a very wrong mindset to have do not hop on trends it's not helpful to you in any way trends have a short lifespan they do not last forever something that is new today becomes old tomorrow give yourself sense when buying luxury items you need to be able to discipline yourself so you don't spend above your means. Have an organized wardrobe system. Know the essentials you want to have in your wardrobe. Know your personal style. You need to make sure that things that you are buying are things that you actually need. Now, creating your personal style actually helps you to stay away from trends. It helps you to curb your appetite for trends. It helps you to stay on track. Creating your capsule wardrobe helps you to stay on track i'm going to leave a link in the description box on how you can create your capsule wardrobe and how you can define or discover your personal style these videos will guide you and help you to be able to ascertain what kind of style category you fall into and how to organize your wardrobe having that structure helps you to not go overboard spending now the next thing that smart money women do not do is compete with other people smart money women are goal driven they are goal oriented you don't compete with people you see people that are wearing the latest trends we know that life does not revolve around material things and luxurious things so we do not feel bad that we cannot afford those things what we do instead is to find and build multiple streams of income make investments to secure our future your future is not going to be taken care of by purchasing luxury designer items and emptying yourself look at yourself you leave personal development you leave business ideas investment opportunities just to go and buy a breaking bag because you saw somebody with it or you want to feel among a particular class of people who do not give a hoot about you or who will not come out to stand for you or i cannot help you in any way when push comes to shove you need to give yourself sense don't compete with anybody stay on your lane know what you're looking for know what you are know what you want be career driven invest in personal development in personal development will help add more value and relevance to yourself as an individual so do not compete with anybody the next thing that smart money women do not do is buy property in a man's name <laughs> buying property in a man's name Oh my god religion has so been washed us to do a lot of stupid things in the name of submission in order for people to accept us listen the people whose attention you are craving for and the people who you are so eager for them to accept when push comes to shove they will rubbish you those people you are looking for approval from especially when it comes to in-laws or family members or just people generally that you're looking for approval from because you want to fit into a certain criteria you want to fit into a certain category of people or you want to be seen as a good woman my dear buying property in your husband's name with your money does not make you a good woman in any way i hope you know that in africa here especially nobody gives a shit about women even women do not give a shit about themselves they know the struggles they have to go through. We know the issues that bother us. We know the things that need to be changed. But we are not bold enough to stand up and say, you know, this has to change. This has to go. Nobody is bold enough to do it. We are okay with looking the other way because we just want to survive. We are not created to just survive. So it is important for you to understand that you are worthy of riches. You are worthy of resources. You are worthy of property. You deserve all the fine things of life. 
They did not write suffering on top of your forehead. Suffering is not imprinted on your destiny. It is not written that you must suffer to gain love or acceptance. It is not written anywhere in the Bible. So you need to wash off that mentality that says that uh, you should not have enough resources. Let me burst your bubble right there. Any man that demands that you submit all your resources to him will most likely not do the same to you with his resources. Do not bear property in your husband's name. If that man dies, you will not see any property. Everything will be claimed in his name. What proof will you have to claim the property when it is written in his name? So you are not doing yourself justice or you are not doing your children justice by buying property in a man's name. If it's your property, please buy it in your name. It is even wiser to buy property in your name as a woman because it is safe and secure. Nobody will come and steal it. Nobody will claim it for themselves. And it also guarantees your children something to hold on to in the nearest future because we all know in Africa here, once a man dies, if his siblings and relatives begin to fight for his property as if he doesn't have wives or children. Nobody sends you once your husband is gone, you're on your own. Nobody gives a shit about you. So you need to take precautionary motives and you have to be smart when you're dealing with property. The next thing that a smart money woman will not do, this I've learned from experience, is to save money or is to have a joint savings account with your husband or your son. Hmm, that is one of the strongest things that can ever happen. Nothing is bad for you to put money together as a couple unless there's a project you are working on or you're saving towards something, a vacation or a holiday or something you guys are both going to do together. It's fine. But for you to see you're putting all your life savings in one account with your partner, especially men. You know men are very reckless with money. 99.9% of men are reckless when it comes to finance. It is only a man I know that can neglect his children, neglect his family, his wife, and take money that he has. Like, so to be forced his family to another woman, or to go and ball out with his friends. It is only a man I know that will do that. Most women will never do such a thing. Women are caregivers. Women protect their family members. They think ahead. They think of their family members. They are prudent. Now, when a woman has resources at her disposal, she thinks of how she can distribute them evenly to other people. But once a man has resources, the first thing that he will think of is how to pleasure himself, how many women he is going to add into his life, and how he will just go on a spending spree, like Father Christmas, with his several women and several friends, just to massage and satisfy his ego. So, putting your money in the same account with a man is dangerous. These people are very impulsive. Women are prudent, they have the capacity to preserve and protect. So, give yourself sense by not opening or having a joint account with your spouse. There are one too many situations out there of people who have couples saving money in the same account and then the husband always, it is always the husband who goes to clear that account and jump up to some of his mistresses. You know, men can be very irresponsible with money so you need to protect yourself, preserve yourself. Don't listen to anybody who is telling you, oh, you are saving for yourself because you are thinking of leaving the marriage or you're thinking of something bad or you're expecting something bad to happen no you're not expecting something bad to happen you are just protecting yourself and your children because at the end of the day like i said earlier if anything happens to him there won't be anybody to provide for you people will toss you aside if you have resources to fall back on you will not feel the impact so you will move on like nothing ever happened so it's very important for women to be financially independent, to not depend on a man. Never ever depend on a man as a source of income. It is a very dangerous game to play. With these few tips of mine, I hope you'll be able to make the right decision when it comes to your finances. Protect yourself, protect your future, do the right thing. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for sticking with me till the end of this video. Stay beautiful and blessed as always and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.